A very good morning to all. Looking at important headlines from the Hindu newspaper for 23rd October. On the front page you have Supreme Court grants bail to Chidambaram. So this is regarding former finance minister P. Chidambaram. He has been behind bars in the case registered by CBI in the INX media case as such. So the Supreme Court has now granted him bail. He has been behind bars for long. The Solicitor General Tushar Mehta argued that he is a flight risk. But the uh, you know, Supreme Court did rejected that argument and he's already in uh, enforcement directorate's custody. So he uh, for the money laundering case as such now related to INX media. So this was also criticized that once he was under CBI judicial custody, then he went into in enforcement director judicial custody. So you know, purposely been kept behind bars separately, you know, one after the other by the two agencies. So there was an editorial on this too. Then this is court to look into government plea for access to WhatsApp chats. So this is regarding how the Supreme Court is now going to look into government's uh, you know, argument that uh, it wants access to WhatsApp chats. It says a terrorist cannot claim privacy. So Supreme Court is hearing this case also whether social media intermediaries such as Facebook and WhatsApp should facilitate the state. The state that is the government to access encrypted and private conversations of citizens purportedly to fight crime and terror. So of course they would come to know whether there was any crime committed or terror related activity going on after the chats are uh, accessed. So it means that anybody's chats could be accessed claiming that it is a security risk. So that is a big blow to right to privacy. But the government argues it is important to check terrorist activities. Then this is Trudeau retains power but loses majority. So Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's Liberals held on to power after a closely fought election but uh, he is reduced to a minority government that will need support in parliament of a smaller left-leaning party. Then this is plea against election commission order on Sikkim CM disqualification. So Delhi High Court has sought a response from the Centre and Election Commission on, on a petition challenging Election Commission's decision to reduce the disqualification period of Sikkim Chief Minister Prema Singh Tamang from 6 years to 13 months. So this had become very very controversial. He was again reinstated as BJP member and you know, BJP uh, Chief Minister as such. So Election Commission had cut short his disqualification and corruption charges. So now there's a petition in Delhi High Court on the matter. And this is one in every six missing children from Bengal. So that's National Crime Record Bureau data. We had seen with some of the data even yesterday how UP, Delhi have high rates of crime. And this is regarding children, children who go missing. One in every six children going missing is from West Bengal. And this is regarding spectrum dues which telecom companies have to pay. So they have been given more time. There is 42,000 crore of spectrum dues which telecom companies are to pay. So this is there. On page 5 you have rise in stubble burning cases in Punjab. So over 3,300 cases have been reported till October 21 as against 2,564 incidents in corresponding period last year. So as paddy harvesting is taking getting momentum in Punjab, the, which is a key grain producing state in the country, there are as many as 3,307 cases of stubble fire incidents that have been reported. Then on page 7 you have, as EVM tampering complaints rise, election commission agrees to look into them. So Congress has written to the poll panel demanding special arrangements for counting. Even in a village, the villagers are claiming every vote went to BJP. So these are voters in Satara village, which they have claimed that votes cast in favor of NCP's Lok Sabha Bipol nominees nominee were going into the account of BJP candidate. So this is also a claim being made. On page 9, you have airlines hit as Diwali travel fails to take off. So, fares on key metro routes are down by 30% at a time when it usually peaks. So, this is how fares have nosedived for airlines also during the Deepavali season. 
and this is Ayodhya Dipotsa given state fair tag. So the Pradesh government has granted the status of state fair to the Dipotsa Mela to be held in Ayodhya during the Kavli. And below you have Power Firm takes Water Ministry to court over Ganga notification. So Alaknanda Hydropower Company has taken the Union Water Ministry and the Uttarakhand State Government to court following a 2018 notification by National Mission for Clean Ganga which is a union water ministry body that requires hydropower companies located on Ganga's tributaries to release more water than from previous years. So this uh, Alaknanda Hydropower Company is located on Alaknanda River, which is a major source river for the Ganga. So it is a 330, 330 megawatt project, which was commissioned in 2014 and is among 19 hydropower projects functioning under various along various stretches of Ganga and its tributaries. But now, since demand has been made for releasing more water, it is said it is financially detrimental and the case has gone to uh, court now. On the editorial page, the first editorial is recording crime. So, this is regarding National Crime Record Bureau's data. It has given report of 2017. So, despite there are delays and drawbacks, its editorial says that this report offers a useful snapshot of crime. And below you have Dominant best. So this is regarding India winning the cricket test series at home in unconventional style with a pace leg led attack. So the front page also has news on cricket, but it's not important for us. The lead article, leaving the door open to a border settlement. So this is regarding India-China uh, border dispute. So we need to find a solution and there have been closed door border negotiations going on and uh, what steps we take ahead. Uh, and we should carefully tread there is legacy of 1962 war which was one missed opportunity when a war broke between india and china in 1962 so we need to find a solution to the border issue and this is firm steps to ease the fiscal federalism tension so the article says that the center should not confuse uniformity for unity and must grant states the power to levy direct taxes so fiscal federalism has been affected because of uh, states' powers to grant taxes, uh, to, to levy taxes, direct taxes being affected. So it says center should not confuse that it, should, it wants uniformity, that it, if there is uniformity, that would be unity. So that is the argument being made here. You can see. So powers to levy income tax. So it is said that that is a monopoly in India today political monopoly <coughs> so this article argues that state governments should be granted the power to levy income taxes so then the argument we need. on opet page you have escaping the honey trap so honey trap is generally you know spies you know coming in a country and uh, trying to get information extract information from uh, you know people in power so they may be officials, armed forces officials, or government servants. So, how India can deal with this age-old spy spycraft, and that has been reinvented for the digital age, is discussed here. How we can escape? How a person can escape the honey trap? So, you know, generally, sex is used to induce, you know, uh, as such, entice people and get access to valuable information. Then this is preparing preparing for disruptions induced by policies. So the temporary slowdown, this article argues, in some sectors may carry lessons that will help India prepare for future disruptions. So we are seeing slowdown in certain sectors, so like slump in auto or bike sector. So this may help us uh, prepare for future disruptions is what this article argues. And this is looking at the larger picture. So this article says that India should not let contentious issues dictate the overall tenor of bilateral relations. So this is even in the context of relations with Turkey, Saudi Arabia. So we should look at the larger picture. The present contentious issues should not be overshadowing uh, overall bilateral relations with the countries. Then on page 12, you have India needs to address human rights issues in Jammu and Kashmir. So this is US Congress as such, which has said that uh, Indian government has uh, should hear, uh, should address human rights issues. U US Congress should hear more about the current situation is what a former NY says. So, you know, there's need for some depth and clarity on the issue of Jammu and Kashmir as such. 
and here you have us lawmakers flag extended curves in jammu and kashmir so indian officials have tried to play up the fact that uh, the hearing of us congressional subcommittee which focuses on issue of jammu and kashmir so it's a generally human rights issues which are discussed other asian countries issues are also discussed like pakistan and sri lanka but uh, the extended curves in jammu and kashmir have been questioned by us lawmakers both articles are related And then this is Nagaland to act against officials who criticize government policies. So gag order following a follows a statement by Naga interlocutor N R N Ravi that the peace talks will conclude by month end. So now Nagaland is uh, Na Nagaland government has warned government officials of disciplinary action if they found they are found criticizing policies and actions of the state by expressing their views on social media and making statements before the press. So that's the gag order. On page 13, again you have National Crime Records video data. It says 30% jump in crimes against state. So report cites 51 cases of sedition and 901 under Unlawful Activities Prevention Act. You can see majority of the cases are from UP. Means many people are booked for such sedition charges as such. Then comes uh, you know Maharashtra, Karnataka, and Rajasthan. Then on international page here you have coverage on Canada elections and here you have parliament defeats British PM's ratification timetable. So British Prime Minister Boris Johnson wants to get the Brexit deal done by 31st October but British parliament is not ready for it. It wants an extension of the date. So this is a concern here. So we will see. And this is Turkey, Russia strike a deal on Syria. So both countries will now jointly patrol the northeastern border. So Turkey had attacked the northeastern region of Syria. Russia had come in after USA vacated, it left the region. So now both the countries, Turkey and Russia, have come with a come up with a deal. On business page, you have Infosys starts probe into CEO's conduct. So, law firm Shardul Amar Chand Mangaldas and Company will investigate unethical practices of Mr. Parikh and the CEO and CFO Mr. Roy of Infosys. Then, on the last page, you have this is German firm Volocopter, which tests its battery operated, operated two seater vehicles in Singapore. So, flying taxis may be you know, coming up at any time because of traffic jams, which we see. And this is Meet the White Bellbird, the world's loudest bird. So, this white male bellbird, its mating song has more decibels than the bellow of a bison. So, it's called the loudest bird in the world. So that is it. These are the important headlines. For detailed coverage of current affairs, you can visit our website ahr.com.